In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and Sega 32X games up and running in the PS2 version of RetroArch. The Sega Genesis and its add-ons, the Sega CD and Sega 32X, are emulatable on the PS2 version of RetroArch. The performance of these systems can be pretty mixed. In my testing, I found the experience overall pretty good, so that's why I'm making a video about it, just to show you all how to get it up and running as well. But let's go ahead and dive in. To get started, let's go ahead and take our USB stick out of our PS2 and put it into our computer. Now just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my prior PS2 RetroArch install video. So if you haven't installed RetroArch, you need to do that first. So go check out that video. It should be in the upper right hand corner of the screen in that little exclamation point, or there's a link in the description below, but you do need to have RetroArch installed first, and you need to make sure you have at least run it once before continuing on from this point. But anyways, the next thing we're going to need are some Sega games, and you can dump these using a Retro 2, you can get them from the Wii Virtual Console, you can get them from a couple of Sega Genesis Classic Collections, I believe, as well as the Genesis Mini. And then for Sega CD games, you could just rip those off of a computer if you have an optical drive and some Sega CD games. Or, you know, you could always resort to the shady parts of the net, I really don't give a crap which way you do it, just don't ask me for download links because I won't give them to you and I'll just delete your comment because that's illegal and I like to keep my channel out of potential hazards. Don't ask. But anyways, once we've sourced our games, we just need to add them to our USB thumb drive. So I made a folder in a prior tutorial named RetroArch ROMs and this is just where I'm putting all of my games at, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of them over. And once those games have finished copying over, we're just going to go back up to the root of the USB stick real quick. Because there is one more file we need to place, and that is a BIOS file for the Sega CD if you happen to be using Sega CD games. If you're only doing Genesis or 32X games, you can skip this part, but if you want to play Sega CD, you do need a BIOS file. Now, I do have a video on the channel showing you how to back up a Sega CD BIOS from your actual Sega CD hardware using an EverDrive. So if you want to check that out, a link will be in the description below. Now, the BIOS file does need to be named BIOS underscore CD underscore U dot bin for North American US uh, Sega CD BIOS. If you want to use a European BIOS, it needs to be named BIOS underscore CD underscore E. And then for Japanese stuff, it needs to be BIOS underscore CD underscore J dot bin. But once you have that Sega CD BIOS sourced and named correctly, we need to put it into our RetroArch system folder, so that is going to be in our RetroArch folder on the PS2 USB drive. And then we're going to go into the next RetroArch folder here, and there is the system folder right here. So we're just going to put the BIOS file right there, and we're good to go. With all these files placed, go ahead and shut down everything on your computer, take the USB drive out, and put it back into your PS2, because we're ready to start playing. Now, just as a second reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original PS2 RetroArch install video, so if you haven't installed RetroArch, refer back to that video for how to do so. And again, you need to make sure you run it at least once after getting it set up so you have the folders needed to place that Sega CD BIOS file. But now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and launch into RetroArch. So you can do that by either going into Launch Elf, or if you set up a shortcut for your free MC slash HD boot menu, you could do it from there as well. And now that RetroArch has booted, we're free to begin loading up our Sega game. So you could do so by going to Load Content, navigating down to Mass. This is your USB storage device. Go to the directory that you have your game stored in. So again, I put mine in RetroArch ROMs. Yours don't have to go into a folder name this. You can put them wherever the frick you want. And then I just have them Sega 32X, Sega CD, and Sega Genesis. And then from here, you can select a game and it will boot up. Now, I don't personally prefer this method. I instead like to go back to my main menu, go down to playlists, and make a playlist for all my games. So to do this, you click on import content. Manual scan, content directory, go back down to mass and find your game directories. So I'm just going to start with Sega 32X since it's first. I'm going to tell it to scan this directory, system name, make sure this is set to content directory, and it will name the playlist after the folder that you have your game stored in. 
And then for the default core, we are going to scroll down to the bottom here where it says Sega, and we are going to choose, and we are going to choose the Sega Pico Drive Core. Make sure Scan Recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And for the PS2 version of RetroArch, I don't really recommend having your games zipped, so unzip them before putting them on the USB stick, and uh, things are just a little bit smoother that way in my experience, but yeah. Once you have these options set, go ahead and start the scan. And once the scan has completed, we could do it with our next system. So that was Sega 32X. Let's go ahead and do it with Sega Genesis now. Tell it to scan. There we go. And now for Sega CD, things are gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna go in and tell it to scan Sega CD directory. But we're gonna add in the file extension of Q. So that way we just get the Q files brought up and not the Q and bin files. Because depending on how you did your rips, you could have up to 30, 40 bin files. And if you don't tell it to just scan the Qs, you'll get 30 or 40 entries for that single game, depending on how many bin files it has. And that doesn't exactly work. You have to launch it from the Q file. So there we go, file extensions, Q. And now we can go ahead and start the scan again. And once we have finished all of these scans, we will have new entries for Sega 32X, Sega CD, and Sega Genesis games. And then to run the game, all we need to do is go down to it, click on it, and then click on run. And there we go, Sega Genesis games up and running on the PS2 version of RetroArch. And like I said earlier, most games run really well for the system. You will notice a couple of graphical glitches here and there, but nothing too, too major. And for the first time in our PS2 emulation series, the aspect ratio is actually pretty much spot on for Sega Genesis. So it's actually pretty fun. Again, I have no idea what's going on with the aspect ratio for most of the emulator cores on the PS2 version of RetroArch. It's still new, so there's probably a lot of bugs there, but it also might be because I run through the GBSC. I just don't know. But Sega Genesis looks great, so it makes me happy. And again, most stuff should run really well for you here. Next up, we have the Sega 32X, and this is where things start to uh, be at a disadvantage for the PS2. As you can see, it is exceptionally laggy and not exactly, not exactly playable how you would want it to be. Considering the extra horsepower behind the 32X, not, uh, not, not wholly unexpected, to be honest. So, unfortunately, 32X stuff, you're not going to have the greatest time with, but... I figured I would show it to you anyway, even though it isn't the best. And lastly, we have Sega CD, which unfortunately also doesn't seem to run very well. Graphically, it looks okay, but it does have issues with slowdown. And I'm honestly not sure if this is related to the PS2's CPU power, or if it might be a USB 1.0 limitation. I don't know. I feel like USB 1.0 should theoretically have enough speed to play Sega CD games okay, but you just never know. See, that scene runs full speed, so you just never know. Oh, and look at that. Now we're at full speed. So yeah, Sega CD can run full speed or encounter lag, just depending on what's going on, so... I don't know, it's, again, not a system I really recommend playing on the PS2 currently, because there are moments where it's awesome and other moments where it just sucks, so it's hard to, it's hard to really say. So, honestly, the only thing I really recommend really using on the PS2 is Sega Genesis, because that, for the most part, has been very solid. But, I don't know, you can uh, try it out, experiment, and see what y'all think. But for those of you looking to get Sega Genesis games up and running on RetroArch, that is the process. But let's go ahead and cover some of the more advanced core options now. So if you hold down the start button on your PS2 controller for two seconds, it will bring up the RetroArch quick menu. And from here, scroll down to options. Now our first option is to change the input device for our Sega Genesis CD32X games between a three button pad or a six button pad. So the majority of games will run on three button pads, but you know, there's some games you want a six button pad for like Street Fighter. So you could change between those here. Do be aware, not all games will run if a six button pad is selected. That is why it is defaulted to three button. So just change this as you need. 
And if you really need to, you can also save a game override, just depending on if you need a six button or three button pad. That way everything's kind of automatic for you. It makes it nice and easy. And then same thing for player two. Then you could disable the sprite limit. So the Genesis would start to flicker if uh, a lot of sprites were on the same scan line. So you could disable that here if you need to. I like authenticity, so I like to leave it off. Next, there's a Mega CD RAM cart. You can emulate that if you want to for Sega CD games. So that way you can uh, save some of your games to a Mega CD RAM cart and don't run out of space. Next, we have region selection. So this is going to be set to auto by default. And for most things, that is just fine. But if you have a game that you want to mess around with that has different regional settings within it, you can change it manually here. Next is the core provided aspect ratio. I like to set this to 4x3 personally. Next we have the show overscan option. I recommend leaving this off because it just displays a bunch of garbage data at the sides of the screen, so I like to have it off. Next is a emulated Sega Genesis CPU overclock. I don't really recommend messing with this on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Games are already not able to run at full speed sometimes, so overclocking the emulated CPU is just going to make it worse, so just don't mess with it. Skip dynamic recompilers. And next you can add on an audio filter to emulate more of a Model 1 sound. You can try this out. If it starts to lag, you can turn it off. Next we have frame skip options, and you can try to enable these if you want to make Sega 32X or Sega CD run a little bit better. It's going to come at the cost of FPS and overall smoothness to the game, but hey, you might get a playable speed, so maybe it's worth it. Then you can do the threshold percent here as well. Next, we have the renderer, and you want to leave this on accurate to get all of your games to be playable. Good and fast can't render mid-frame changes, making them very limited for some games, so just leave it on accurate. Next is a sound quality option. This is already set to max. You can try lowering it to get a little bit of speed back if you want to. But that's going to cover our core options for Pico Drive. Again, if you have games that you want to have certain settings for, like the controller, you can go into Manage Core Options and save it as a game option, so that way every time you load up that specific game, those are the options that will greet you. Alternatively, after you have everything set up the way you want, you can also save it as a Core Override, so that way every time you load up a Sega Genesis, Sega CD, or Sega 32X game, those are the options that will greet you as well. But that should pretty much cover it as far as Sega Genesis, CD, and 32X game emulation on the PS2 version of RetroArch is concerned. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. Again, the only thing I really think is actually usable for this core is the Sega Genesis portion. But again, more demanding games may start to exhibit some performance issues. And Sega CD can be a mixed bag and 32X just seems relatively laggy uh, from the games I've been able to test on it. But anyways, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching these videos. I hope they're helping you out. And now if you could all do me a huge favor and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live along with new reviews or other random nonsense. Really goes a long way to helping the place out and we are so grateful to all of you for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also click that join button here on YouTube or check out the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keep the place up and running and we are just super grateful to everyone who has already done so. Champions, thank you so much for keeping us going. You all freaking rock. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.